Welcome to the Senegat Historical Society. My name is Stan Albert. I'll be your so-called tour guide today. Uh, we're going to start our dictation here with the Pelsi Marquis House, our original building that we were able to procure uh, in 1976. The foundation was built in 1977 by Jerry Moore. Um, and a group of people just got together to preserve the culture, the history of our village. Uh, the Pelzi Marquis House was built in 1855, first portion of it. The second portion was built in 1895, uh, give or take a couple years. And then we started to expand. We have a granary where that was used to store oats in the wintertime for the animals to replant in the springtime. We have a, a barn that was built on site to house some of our machinery, some of our uh, equipment that we couldn't leave out to the elements. And to this day in 2003, the preservation center was built. And it was just a simple structure, a barn, 40 feet by 60 feet. Two years down the road, three years down the road, it, built, it, was, it grew to 100 feet or to 90 feet. And three years beyond that, it grew to 110 feet on two full floors. So there's a lot of exhibition room to store our artifacts, uh, make displays, and to show the people the culture of our homes, our schools, and our churches. And family life dealt with family life education and religion. Plain and simple. Today we're showing from the uh, display area that we call a rotating display. Every year we display something new. Artwork, uh, quilts, as you can see we have a ton of quilts. Uh, we display uh, fabrics that were taught uh, sewing, taught by the sisters at Wisdom uh, school or convent school in St. Agat. Uh, we have numerous displays, numerous artifacts uh, to show you today. We'll start with the display of 2020. Unfortunately the public can't come in because we're closed but you know we'll have a virtual tour of our famous historical society. This quilt I procured from uh, Mary Kelly, a woman from Allagash. I had it made for myself uh, sh because of the tradition that they quilt. They, they knot their fabrics together so they don't separate. They just use various designs. Unfortunately, I don't remember the design name of this one. Then we move on to qu uh, blankets made of 100% wool, whereas the warp was the strings that you wove to and the weft was the strings that you wove across. So this is blanket made for a crib uh, in wool. It was donated by one of our patrons. Then we go to a necktie quilt that is quite modern uh, that I received from a lady in Allagash as well and St. Francis. Uh, they would just get together and quilt. Then we use a spinning wheel, the trade mechanism that every household had. Uh, women would weave, uh, would spin their yarn and thus making these beautiful blankets. These blankets were donated to us by a Mrs. Constance Guimon in memory of her mother-in-law, Anaïs Guimon. Uh, Anisi Guimon. Uh, these are wool blankets woven on a cotton we uh, warp. The weft, of course, going across side to side is 100% wool, but what is, is woven on is called the warp. So this was a fabulous display and a wonderful uh, idea on how they would decorate and the pride that they took to make blankets. They would decorate the edges and, and the color of the of the the, fa the the color of the yarn that they used in weaving, so they would do that. And this one here comes from, I want to say, Cléo Wallet. Yes, Jean Paul and Cléo Wallet of Frenchville. 
she donated this blanket and again it's on on cotton there are blankets that are just like boiled wool meant that the warp was wool the weft was wool and after it was washed it would pack itself down and it was just like a boiled wool kept people very very warm in the winter because the houses were inadequately inadequately heated so we have as you can see a fine display of woolen blankets then we come to les catalogues a catalogue is a french word for fabric it was a woven fabric on a loom a weft and warp again but it was usually made of uh, fine yarns lighter weight yarns such as this one uh, which was used for summer weight it wasn't quite as warm and then you had the cotton yarns like these or the cotton yarns like these these are new but they were cotton on cotton the uh, linens or the cottons that were used were cotton threads with rag going war uh, weft the rags would go side to side in order to create a pattern and I'll show you that this is a ball of rag they'd recycle everything that they used uh, that they had left in the house so they'd find fabrics and they'd take them apart make this thing fabric and once it was woven it was just a thin line such as this and it would create a usable fabric either in blankets or rugs or anything you wanted to use it for this is a sample of weaving uh, done by our Lee Sirwa, our uh, Textile Thursdays director. She would mm -hmm. teach ladies on how to make baskets and knit and crochet and paint. Uh, she did a little bit of everything. So this was one of her projects that she did. And it was just a scarf that she'd weave and they'd have something to go on. And in this corner here is a throw made by Lee Sirwa of different fabrics, different yarns, acrylics and wools and whatever else that she did. Uh, she would put this together, she wove these on her looms and uh, then we can go across this way. These are crazy quilts or patchwork quilts that people would take fabric apart once the pants were worn or the shirts were worn, they cut the usable pieces off and show off their stitching by putting them together with their stitches. And then we have this quilt right here. It's a patchwork quilt made of velour fabrics and some brocade fabrics and corduroy fabrics. And it was made in the 1940s by Mrs. Gaillon, uh, Sophie Michaud Gaillon. She made this quilt to demonstrate her talents as far as piecing fabrics together and making a usable fabric. And finally we go to these rosette quilts that was made by our own director's great-grandmother uh, uh, Madeleine Plod and she would make all these little rosettes and she'd stitch them to the back of fabrics and they this was a comforter on a bed. And then we go into more wool blankets. This is a true wool blanket. This is all wool, wo woven uh, on warp, that is wool, wefting on wool. And when you washed it, it came out to a boiled wool that women buy today for jackets and pay two and three hundred dollars for. We got it for nothing. <laughs> and then the ladies would make rugs they'd make clothing as well but they would spend their evenings or their free time doing some th fun projects so they'd make the rugs that were necessary to put on floors so these rugs were handmade uh, using wool or cotton and in this case they'd use a thimble uh, not a thimble but a spool of thread put four little nails on it and bring thread or yarn through it and they would just pick at it and make a chain of fabric or, or yarn and then they braid them together and they create their own rugs. And then the modern version of a rug 
is not this one, is, is this one. It's not necessarily modern, but these were just strips of fabric that they would cut and make a, a braided rug on a loom. Once the rug was made, they just take it off and put it on the floor, and that was it. It was done. But this is a bigger rosette. Each rosette was made with a square piece of fabric. They would take a needle and, sw and slowly go through the ring and, and uh, the, the little eye here and they tuck it in to create this rosette. This is called a 9 by 9 pattern. Uh, I'm very familiar with this pattern because my mother still makes these, these blankets. This is called a 9 by 9 pattern and using a variety of colors they would sew these 9 squares together and then join them to this 9 square. And like again and again and again and this one is not attached because we left it deliberately out so that uh, open so that we could see that this separates traditionally they would tack it to the background so when you'd use it on a bed or on the foot of a bed or a, uh, a chair that it wouldn't come apart but this one uh, was made by Florence Martin and uh, she's a, a master quilter when it comes to rosettes. This is, this is her métier. Um, so this is, is called a throw. And it's basically just little squares of fabric that are made together in a circle and thrown in a box. And then those circles are joined together in a pattern that's, this is nine by nine, three by three by three. And, uh, they would make nine squares, they would make other patterns as well, but I'm, and there were some crazy quilts that not one circle was the same going up, so that it was all different. But it was made by Florence Martin and again deliberately left the backing untacked so that people would see how they're assembled. Of course the Historical Society is closed this summer, so we are going to carry this this uh, display on to next year so that people can come and visit us. Uh, we're traditionally open from Father's Day to the end of September and uh, you can all come and enjoy this beautiful work uh, that these women did because the men did the work in the farm and the animals and whatever but the women took care of the houses and were obligated to make them fabric for clothing, make them sweaters and socks for keeping them warm, and also making blankets to keep them very warm.